That might have been an example of the Doppler effect in which sound waves can sound higher or lower in pitch depending on whether the things emitting the sound waves are moving relative you, moving towards you relatively or relatively moving away. It also works for light as well, so we're going to learn all about it. Get ready! With the Doppler effect, you will probably be familiar with it as the fact that people will hear waves as being of a higher frequency or a lower frequency based on whether the source is moving towards them, the source of the waves, or if they are moving towards the source, or even with uh, visual stuff, uh, with light waves, if the source of the light waves uh, is moving towards them or away. Now in this situation, you can see that we've got a car that's just stationary. And let's say it has a car alarm or a siren going off. Uh, both these people on either side will be hearing the same frequency because the car is stationary. Now keep in mind this drawing is representing wave fronts with these blue lines. However, if this car takes off and is moving quite quickly, the waves as they're being emitted tend to get a little scrunched up because the car always moves a little bit farther ahead before it emits the next one. So this person, as it shows, here's a higher frequency. As the car is moving away from poor person here, then it emits a wave, it drives farther, and then emits another one, and then it drives and emits another one. So they get more spread out. So the wavelength gets lengthened. And that's going to cause a lower frequency. The speed of the waves is completely unaffected. They still travel at the speed of sound, 330 meters per second, for example. This equation may appear quite daunting for the faint of heart, but it's actually not too bad, as long as you know what means what. Uh, this frequency is going to be the new frequency as altered by the Doppler effect. This is going to be the original frequency put out by uh, the source. And then you've got the speed of the source, which is this one on top, and the speed of sound on bottom. That's if you are stationary as a listener and the source itself is moving. But you can see we've got a plus and a minus. Now you should know that if it's moving towards you, the wavelengths are going to get more scrunched together, which means a higher frequency. So as you hopefully can figure out, that means if it's going to be higher, this F here, then you want to divide by a smaller denominator. So in this case, with this equation, you will use a negative sign and F gets bigger. Let's call it F prime. It's getting bigger. If it's moving away from you, then the wavelengths get more stretched out, the frequency that you hear is lower, and so you want to get, divide this by a larger denominator, which means a positive sign. And F prime is now going to be smaller. Now, if uh, the object emitting sound is stationary and you yourself are moving, you have to use a different equation. Kind of a pain, but it's still not too hard, as long as you know that this still means the new frequency, and this is the original frequency. Now, if, it, if you are moving towards the source, you should know that you're going to hear a higher frequency because you're running into the waves more often because of your approach towards the source. So you should be uh, using the positive sign. And the F should get big. If you are moving away from it, you're running away from all those waves, and so they won't hit you as often. So you are going to have F prime getting smaller. And for this equation to become smaller, you will end up subtracting with the negative sign. And hopefully it's obvious that, again, this V on bottom is the speed of sound, and the speed of the observer is that V sub zero. Here is a sample problem to solve on the Doppler effect about a crazy trombonist in a moving car. Pause it, see what you can do. I drew a picture here that maybe you should have drawn too to help you picture what is going on. And the correct equation to use is this one here for moving source. And you should be deciding the frequency that you hear, is it going to be bigger or smaller? It's coming towards them. Waves are getting scrunched up. 
So it has to be a higher frequency, which means you need to use the negative sign to make the denominator lower. Now pause it, see if you can solve it correctly. And here you can see I used the negative sign to make the denominator smaller and thus the frequency bigger. You then plug and chug through your numbers and you're going to get a 390 hertz as your original frequency. And this is going to be end up times 1 divided by 0.859. And you end up eventually with a higher frequency of 454 hertz. Let's round that to two sig figs to 450 hertz. Now compared to 390, that's significantly higher in frequency. And well, this is a pretty high speed. 48 meters per second, we're talking 140 kilometers per hour or something quite large like that. So you should hear a distinctive difference in the frequencies. With light waves, it does not matter whether you, the listener, are or the observer are moving, or whether the source is moving, all that matters with light waves is that there is motion, relative motion, between the observer and the radiation emitter. And so it has its own equation, which is what you see up here, which delta F is going to tell you the change in the frequency, and here you have your velocity, relative velocity. Let's make that clear. That's relative velocity amongst the observer and the source, and then C, you can probably guess, is the speed of light. Now with that in mind, pause it, see if you can solve this problem. First you want to find their speed relative to each other, which can be done by just adding the 180 plus the 250, and you're going to end up with 430 meters per second as your relative velocity, or that's going to be your v for the equation. Now, see what you can do to find that ratio between that velocity and the speed of light. Now, notice that I did adjust this frequency to give it many significant figures, because otherwise it'll be a subtle change that you wouldn't notice. But the relative velocity of the 430 divided by the giant speed of, spare, of, uh, speed of light, and we're going to end up with something like 1.43 times 10 to the negative 6, that's unitless because these canceled, times the 2.5 times 10 to the 6 because it's mega uh, hertz. Now, our delta F is going to be only about 3.6 hertz. Let's round that to just 4 hertz is our change. And so they're going to hear a higher frequency, because that's going to be a positive delta F, because they're going towards each other. So they will actually uh, pick up on their sensors a 2,500,004 hertz signal, as opposed to just the 2,500,000 hertz that they heard before. That is it. The Doppler effect for light is used in a few everyday things, such as, such as Police radar guns will bounce radiation off oncoming traffic or to find out how fast it's going so they can bust them for speeding, or maybe radar guns to pick up how fast uh, a ball is traveling in uh, baseball, for example. But uh, maybe more interesting is in the world of astronomy, in which case we know that most of the distant galaxies from us are moving farther away. Even though when we look at them, we can't tell they're moving, they're not getting any smaller. But if we look at the frequency that is coming off of them, we know that it should be a particular frequency f, based on what we know about its temperature and chemical makeup, etc. But they appear to all be giving off a frequency f prime, which is lower than f up there. Now, in other words, if this were visible light, it would be shifted to a slightly lower frequency, which would mean shifted towards invisible light, the red end of the spectrum. So that's why we call it redshift. If it were shifting its light to a higher frequency, towards the higher end of the visible spectrum, we'd call it blue shift. But it turns out it's not. It's redshifted for the most part. And so what we can do is we can compare the original frequency to f prime, which is the new redshifted or lower frequency. And based on that, 
we can then find the speed that galaxies are moving away from us. A kind of famous astronomer in the early 1900s by the name of Hubble was made famous for using this to find out that our universe was expanding. They named a Hubble constant after him, and the most famous telescope known to man, the Hubble telescope, is given his name for this as well.